Really? Rain. Yeah. It's raining. Crazy. It's in the middle of the summer over here. <laughs> is it My... how hot is it there? Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. There was an earthquake in New York. Did you hear about that? Yeah. Oh. Really? Was it big? It was like a four point eight. Oh boy. Was there damage? I don't think there was damage, but that's I don't know. This makes me nervous because some of the buildings um my son has lived in are just oh yeah look barely livable. <laughs> right. <laughs> Northeast earthquake, yeah. Hmm. 4.8, you're right. Yeah, Tremors from Philadelphia to Boston and jolted buildings in New York City. Hmm. Can I run to the restroom real quick? Yeah, sure. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so this is like a, this game is old like one of the very first ever fmvs yeah yeah and you guys thought you were trailblazers yeah we, we were we were sadly mistaken <laughs> all right so what is the weather in your summer day over there? I think it's tomorrow we're going to have 95 degrees. Oof, okay. At least the st sandstorm passed after I had to clean my computer from all the sand because what? I left Yeah, because I left my window open that day and I <laughs> went to work and I got back and everything was sandy. What? Uh, That's what? Yeah, there's <laughs> We don't live in the same place. There's no sand here. Is there sand everywhere? It's like when you walk, it's just, where you, what? where's the sand coming from? The sand is coming from Egypt, which <laughs> is very sandy. <laughs> yeah, how far away we is We don't Egypt have that here? much sand All right. over here. So was it just wow. a giant sandstorm? I missed the beginning. Yeah, so there was a giant sandstorm coming from Egypt. And so... Uh, the, there was sand everywhere and, and I went to work and I early morning didn't seem so sandy but I left my window open went to work got back everything was sandy had to clean everything up let's start but did it hurt your equipment no it's time to start here we go okay hey everybody welcome to conversations with Curtis happy Friday we're here we're we're sleuthing. We're going to be sleuthing today with Sherlock Holmes, the Consulting Detective, a FMV game from 1991, and I will be joined by my Sherlock Holmes, Tori, and I will be the Watson uh, to her Sherlock, and uh, Daniel will be I don't know is he Moriarty? I guess he'll be Moriarty. One of us will be Moriarty. Uh, but anyways, we're excited to play that and. This has been a fun week. We've had a lot going on. It's nice to be streaming regularly. Uh, had a great time with uh, Noah on Monday with Toonstruck. Tuesday, I played um, The Toilet Chronicles, which was great fun. And then Daniel and I did some pinball on Wednesday. And we promise we won't do that anymore. We've decided that uh, pinball will now just be our own little, you know, our own little addiction that we keep to ourselves. And then we're here with Tori today. Uh, yeah, good stuff. We took the yesterday off, but we're going to be with Tori today. So thanks for joining us. Oh, I see we already have our first. Hey, look at me. There I am. CJ tipped 20 pieces of eight. Happy Friday, y'all. Hello, Tori, Paul, Daniel. Hey, CJ. Thanks for joining. Thanks for your... As always, kind donation. I really appreciate it. I uh, hope you're doing well. How are things? Um, I keep thinking about uh, the game that we played and how I never finished it. I think that's a game I might want to do one of my solo streams on and just do it from the beginning on my own. It seems uh, like a, 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 a... Daniel, what's the name of that game again? What was it called? The something? The, the one... 
No, no, no. The one we played with uh, Clamam uh, a while back. Yeah, Edith Finch. That's right. Yeah, I think I might want to play that game at some point. That'd be fun. Anyways, uh, thanks for joining. I'm just going to look at our our folks who are here, and it looks like a lot of the a lot of the gang, the whole gang is here. Joseph's here, and Fred Almeida is here. Uh, Weird is here. Zuki, hello. How are you? Schwex and uh, Dragoon, Ozzy. Good to see you guys. Thank you so much, CJ. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys are all doing well. All right. Um, not much else to report. So let's say thanks to our Patreon members. Hello, Patreon members. Thank you so much for your uh, support. We sure do appreciate it. If you are in a position to help these guys help us, that would be awesome. So consider a monthly donation on Patreon or Coffee if you are in a position to do that. That would be great. Uh, and if you're not in a position to do a monthly donation, you can always contribute to our individual streams, just like CJ did today. Help us get to our goal. And uh, and if you contribute enough, you can get onto our top seven uh, list, which at the moment is Zwex at number one. Girlfriend has now moved up to number two. With CJ at number three, CompuArt at four, Doppelganger, Top Fuel, and Ozzy Astroth at the number seven level. Thank you guys for your support. All right, let's bring out our friends. Let's bring out Sherlock and Moriarty. How are you guys? Hi. Hi. Good. Hi. How are you? We're good. You know, we already had our catch-up session. I almost feel bad for these guys because we had a good catch-up session before before we uh, we started, and I'm sure they would have loved to have, have heard it. But uh, how are you? What's going on in your world, Tori? What can you tell us that we didn't already well, hear about? Oh, um, yeah. So I just I was in Oregon um, visiting family and got some work on my book done there. And um, can we can we officially call it your book now and not your stupid book? Are you are you in a better place it the with dumb your book, book now? It's Kong just the dumb movie. book now. Okay, good. It's moved from stupid yeah. to dumb. Okay, so that's yeah. a step forward. So it's, yeah, I'm making progress. And um, what's the else? last best thing you did on your book? What's the last moment where you're like, okay, okay, I think I solved that problem. Or I really like the way I I phrased that thought. Or was what, what's, what was a little victory you had? Oh, just remembering something that would enhance the scene that I just mm -hmm. thought of last night and I and I typed it into my phone so I wouldn't forget and I just plugged it in this morning uh, oh good did you have that yeah. moment where you is it is that one of those things where you went to bed and you're not really thinking about it and then all of a sudden you have that oh the aha moment where you're like yeah yeah because remember because my book is kind of it's based you know it's um, it's a lot based on you know a period in my life so mm -hmm. but fictionalized yeah so some memory popped into my head um, good do we have yeah. a title that you can share or a working title um i <laughs> the working title is sprung Ooh, i like that there's a lot there's a lot that goes there's a lot in that word there's a there's a lot of potential that could go a bunch of different ways i don't know if that's what it's going to be but that's just what i'm that's what it's been for a while. Okay, so. cool. Well, good. I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're back at it and feeling yeah. a little better about it. Uh, Daniel yeah. hasn't seen. I haven't seen you in a couple hours. How how are you doing? Yeah, doing great. <laughs> As you said, we'll probably not play pinball on stream ever again. Fred <laughs> underscore PJ tipped five pieces. Oh eight. Tori's back. Yay. Yeah, Wait, so Tori, absolutely. you said that it's Thanks, based Fred. on a fictionalized version of your of a certain period in your life. So mm -hmm. can I guess that it's about an FMV actress that played in a horror game in 1995, but fictionalized? So, I don't know, you kill everyone in the end. <laughs> no, <called>. that's incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> but, but one can help. Um, yeah, that's yeah, that's a good idea. I could, I could <laughs> maybe it could be your next book. Yeah, your next yeah, book. Yeah, um, yeah, th that's this is a more of a um, coming of age young uh, like a story. Uh, nice. 
a little younger. And then you can do the audio uh, book version of it too. And we can listen to your voice, read the book. Oh, we can, yeah. Or fun. maybe we could be all, uh, we could be a part of the audio recording and we could, we could uh, do play live streams. Characters? We could, yeah, we play different ruin, characters. <laughs> let's not ruin the, the audio book. <laughs> okay. All right. First of all, we'll you, you guys in your family, Tori, are pretty mm -hmm. talented when it comes to coming of age stories. David with the holdovers, you with this book. Oh, Frodo well, I, the I, Jedi I, I 991 I tipped five dollars. I won't be able to watch the full stream due to work in a few hours, but I had to continue to show support to this awesome community. Oh, oh thanks. Wow. Is that, who is that Chicken tipped five pieces of eight. You guys are my favorite YouTube trio. Wow. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Cheesy Chicken. Who was the person oh, nice. before that? <laughs> Daniel? Is that like a... I can look Wait. it up here. She's a chicken and Frodo the Jedi 099. Oh, yeah. Thanks, you guys. Both okay, so you were saying, that. yeah, David was the holdovers and you with this book? Oh, yeah. I just only hope that I can do justice to my story the way that he did to his. Yeah. We never talked about this. Was that, uh, was, did, did, was there, um, was that, I mean, it's. Not, I know that he autobiographical. Yeah, was that autobiographical, or was that Isn't something? It? I know that that uh, Alexander yeah. Payne sort of tapped your your husband or David to write that story. Was that Dave, Alexander's idea? Was that your, your was it Dave's or what was it? Well, he um, Dave had written a pilot that was autobiographical, um, set in um, private school that that he went to and. Mm. Um, and so, like, the main character was based on him. So then when Alexander, Alexander read that script. Oh, okay. And um, said, I uh, really loved your script, but I don't want to make it. <laughs> I want to make <laughs> something else. Because he had, like, this idea that um, based on this old French movie he saw where uh, it was just, like, wanted this professor that was, you know, um, but the way Dave describes it, ocularly challenged, um, who, uh, and then I can't remember there, he gave him a few parts of it like that. Gotcha. And then, then Dave wrote it, but he also, a lot of the, um, emotion and the emotional, moments or or behind the characters like the mary character he, he he based a lot of um of her as he wrote it on his mom, own mom oh wow so um and then like the um hall character is a lot based on his uncle dave had an uncle who was really involved in his um his life and talked just like Paul. Oh, really? So that's where he gets a lot of the dialogue. That's and then um, Angus, <clears throat> the, you know, the, the kid is really, he, you know, it's a lot of him in there. So it, right. in some ways that's, it's autobiographical, you know, right. It's an amalgam. Then, yeah. And there was, um, there were a couple of the kids at the school that were based on kids that he grew up with and, like that yeah yeah i, I recognize yeah. some of those kids in my life too i remember those that that those guys um and it's funny okay. because uh, oh sorry no no Look, it's funny because there was um there was a moment when they were filming where um where they you know when the when the helicopter lands on the um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the, and, the rich dad yeah and and some of the some of the Producers were like, or not producers, but I I forget who. Some some people were like, this wouldn't happen. They wouldn't land a helicopter um, right on the school property, and um, and they were. Then they found out that they weren't allowed to land it on this uh, in this one area where they were planning to land it. And one of the guys who worked at the school said, "Why don't you just land it?" Um, I forget what he said on the quad. That's where the parents usually land their helicopters. 
like, where what? they usually do. <laughs> no, they actually, it actually had happened before. Oh, that's So amazing. the day was like, see, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Anyway. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's play some Sherlock Holmes. Let's do it. Okay, that. so we're going to play this game. It came out in 1991. It's based on a table tabletop uh, game from 1981. <laughs> And this is the first FMV game I played. And so we're going to play today. It's got three cases. We're going to play, I think each case has around 30 minutes of footage. And then we have to figure out who the murderer is. And Tori will figure that one out probably sooner than we usually do. And we may get to the second case as well. And that's it. That's my first FMV game. And it came out in was. When I was a kid, Clue was like my favorite game. I loved Clue. Did you ever play oh, yeah. that? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Played a lot of it again once our kids were once we had kids. Had another round of it. Um, and the writer of this game is Annie Fox, wife of David Fox from oh, wow. Lucasfilm Game. Yeah. Isn't that something? All right. Oh. Well then, let's do it. Who's uh, control? Am I, am I in control? Yeah, you're in control. We're going to play, uh, even though this game came out in 1991, we're going to play the 2015 remaster, which adds subtitles and a new UI, because I want to give you guys control over Zoom, and that's the only version that would allow me, allow me to do so. So that's it. OK. OK. Uh, I think you have to hand There you go. You did it already. Good. Um, um, Zuki says, I remember King Charles landing at my old school in a helicopter. Wow. Well, wow. he's a king. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Do we play the game or should I do the introduction? Will the introduction just show up if I play the game? Yeah, no, but you can do the introduction. Yeah, let's do the introduction. <laughs> London is not a beautiful city. Under the soot that covers its buildings is a teeming mass of four million souls trying to survive, mostly off of each other. You see it in the paper every day. Thankfully, we have the London Times to keep us informed of all these troubling activities with an unbiased eye and razor-sharp accuracy. We find this publication to be of invaluable assistance in our investigations, and I'm sure you will as well. Among the forces of evil which run rampant in this city, there are also, thankfully, two groups of individuals who will aid us in our cause. As we do, they attempt to right wrongs and restore harmony and civility to the streets of London. Here, here. The first of these groups is a ragtag association of young ruffians. I call them the Baker Street Irregulars. That'll be Daniel. Let them fool you. They may be scruffy and ill-bred, but they yes, are I am scruffy and ill-bred. <laughs> <laughs> they can go everywhere, see everything, and overhear everyone. Oh, Daniel, there Daniel, Daniel. And ears in the streets of London, unquestionably a tremendous asset in our work. They will help us in our investigations if they can. The other group is a far more civilized collection of gentlemen and institutions. Well, that I would call be them the Baker Street regulars. They, too, will be extremely useful in our work. At the start of any investigation, do keep in mind that it is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Unwittingly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. The people and places to whom I will now introduce you will help us to collect the facts. May we use them I'm wisely. loving this already. Come. The game's a fortune. The well game's done, Sh Sherlock. He was uh, that was one take. He had to do all that in one continuous take. Well done, yeah. I believe. Okay, so re we don't want to replay. We can, re oh, I guess, exit. Uh, do I want to look at all the stuff? Might as well should. Yeah, right? sure. Your sleuthing tools. Oh boy! So it teaches go. you what you can use. You have the newspaper in which you Should can be get your first stop when starting a case. Simply choose one of the papers and look for relevant names. And locations in the article you can scroll each column up and down that is the directory contains names and places to help you in your sleuthing when you hear or read about a curious name select the appropriate tab to look it up then use the directory tools to investigate further once you select a name or location select 
one of the three icons below. You can send Holmes and Watson to the destination. Send the Baker Street regulars instead of search Holmes's files for additional information. You can use your notebook in two ways. Select the Clue History tab to review information on what you have seen and done. Select the Clue Hints tab to request a hint from Dr. Watson himself. Nice. There we go. Sending the detectives to a location will play a video scene. Some scenes are pertinent to the case, while others may lead to dead ends. Red herrings! Touch the video for playback controls. Enable or disable subtitles in the settings menu. <laughs> if you believe that you have enough information to solve the mystery, select the gavel icon to bring your case before the judge. He will ask you specific questions to determine if you are indeed a master sleuth. Certain actions in the game will cost your clue points. Your goal is to solve the mystery in as few points as possible. Note that you will not incur additional points by sending the detectives or the irregulars to a duplicate name in the directory. Wait, okay, so 10 points. Send the detectives to a relevant location. Do we, we want points or we don't want points? We don't Just want to. We, few points as possible. We want yeah, if, as few points as possible. Every everything you do gets you some type of points, and the point of the game is to finish it with as little moves as possible. And by moves, I mean stuff you do in the game. So going gotcha. to places, you need to figure out who the murderer is as soon as possible. So the detectives are the regulars. Yeah. So. The, these are the regulars. Oh, you have the name. The Mr. Henry Ellis is the foreign news editor for the London Times. He is a great reservoir of information of what's happening on the continent. He also has an interest in crime news. Ellis is always happy to help when he can, but you must be careful of what you tell him, or you might find what you've confided to him in the next day's Times. Nice. This is a records office housing documents pertaining to births, marriages, deaths, and last wills and testaments. This seems very well organized. Yeah, so far, history. I'm feeling very Not like a crime the, the, I'm feeling like my create the creators of this game knew what they were doing. The environment of Scotland Yard less than stimulating. He has a strong deductive mind and is a very good resource. Who was that? Quentin. <laughs> Porky is not a pillar of society, I dare say, but he is a man who has learned from his mistakes and is trying to start a new life. Although he is no longer in prison, he is still behind bars, or shall I say, a bar. <laughs> Jolly good one, Holmes. Yes, Watson. Well, the bar in question is the Raven and Rat Inn. Porky is the proprietor. He has been of great help to us in the past, and I expect he will continue to be in the future. All right, is it good to just keep doing this? We probably should. No, you, you can just start yeah. playing the game. So okay. before we start play playing, game. before we start playing, if we love this game, then we're going to play all of the cases. Mm -hmm. And as a bonus, a couple of years ago, somebody went to a garage sale and bought a tape, a box of VHS tapes for like $5. And he bought a VHS player to see what's on those tapes. And he found the tape of the actual recordings of all of the FMV scenes and everything in between, like the uncut footage from this game. So maybe one day we'll have the same with Phantasmagoria. Wow, that's the same. Well, well, we already did have that. What are you talking about? We already found our- I'm talking about Phantasmagoria oh, 1. one. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, that'd be nice. Wow, yeah. very cool. That'd be cool. We're a garage, begin a new game. We're a garage sale away from a remastered Phantasmagoria. We need Here to we find go. It. We need to find it. Within a lantern lit sitting room at 221B Baker Street, Sherlock Holmes slowly takes a pull from his pipe while Dr. Watson, reclining after a bit of tea, pursues, peruses a discarded copy of the London Times. What rubbish! What bored airs! You must have read something terribly disturbing, Watson, for you to be so overwrought this early in the morning. Indeed, Holmes. It's irresponsible of the times to play upon people's superstitions. Ah, you must be referring to the affair of the mummy's curse. It has the entire city in an uproar. Three men dead, and they expect us to believe that a 4,000-year-old mummy was the murderer. I'm surprised you haven't taken some interest in this case, Holmes. To the contrary, my dear Watson. I have made some inquiries. 
Because I dare say I do believe this murderer is a much younger chap. All right. We're off and going here. Okay. We don't need to replay that. Resume. It's not a mummy. It's a younger person than a mummy. What rubbish. What Wait, okay. Click the... But we just did this. Ter- yeah. Okay. So uh, we've got this- our directory, our newspaper, like we've yeah. seen. He said that we should start with the newspaper. So let's mm-hmm. do that. Um. Okay, so April twelfth, on the he said a younger person, on the ninth, the wife. Oh, is that so we have births, marriages, oh, deaths, do. and then you have the article about the mummy strikes again. Maybe we should read that. Let's read that. Uh, the body of James Windebank was discovered late yesterday in the room he was preparing for the British Museum's exhibit of newly discovered artifacts from the tomb of Katabet's mummy. That's a sentence. The archaeologic archaeologist was found strangled. Around his neck were linen bandages of the type used by the ancient Egyptians in wrapping mummies. Windebanks is the third murder to be associated with the mummy Katabet in the past six weeks. The archaeologist had accompanied the London University sponsored expedition uh, to Egypt. Hey, Egypt, there's a lot of sand there, I hear. Mm-hmm. True, the project true. has been cursed with ill luck since the first discovery of the tomb several months ago. Its organizer, Dr. Ebenezer Turnbull, was murdered in the actual tomb itself in early March. Another archaeologist, Andrew Weatherby, met a similar fate on board the ship returning to England just last week. Oh boy, the Jardine ship, Eastern Empress, was the scene of that mysterious death. The shipboard investigation was handled by Captain Herman Ramsey and his first officer, Luther Tenney. Scotland Yard has declined to name any suspects. Um, So you don't have to read the entire newspaper, but if you find anything of interest... And you can read, if not, then we can... Recent discovery of the coffin of Alexander the Great. Um, Latest shipping, wrecks and casualties. Oh, to the editor of the Times, there's a Sir, the recent mummy affair. Ah, there you go. Uh, A point up to a fact that I've been trying to convince my fellow Britons for quite some time. That is the phenomenal number of crimes, particularly for those of serious nature committed by foreigners shouldn't we act now to restrict access to our beloved isle before this tragedy becomes yet worse johnny bulldog trent Hmm. another one here recent mummy murders i would like to suggest that we abandon our attempts to disturb the agents in their graves or otherwise uh surely if these murders are the work of some present day mortal human the police will discover his identity uh okay what do you think, Daniel? Move on. Yeah. All right. And then do we want to read the other ones? I guess we do, huh? We can so flip through them. We're <clears throat> in the first so this, one. I, I read the most recent one. Oh, I guess I didn't. All right. Uh, oh. Personal. Wait, let's go back. What was... We read the one on the 12th. So it was April, March. So this was... This is the most recent. So let's go back to the last one or the most, the farthest away. The earliest. Uh, strange event. Sudden gale. Isle of Man blew off the roof of Stone Church. Miscellaneous drowned on Wednesday evening. Four men were letters. Queen Anne statue. I would be terrible at this game. A murder was committed. In Bloomsbury, shortly after 10 p.m., Constable Lane, the intruder apparently entered by an upstairs window, and judging by the disarray of the study, a struggle occurred at his death. All right. See anything here that we need to? Nope. Okay. Oh, wait, what's, oh, there's something about Egyptian studies. <clears throat> uh, scroll down. What's that? Wait. Um, I'm a world renowned authority in my field. Your reporter obviously has no appreciation for the significance of such finding and has no understanding of archaeology. 
I demand a retraction, post haste, Earl of Downey. All these people could be suspects. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, birth. Recent excavations, excavations in in at the London University of College before an appreciative audience delivered a lecture, history of excavations. Whether it be are embarking this week on a new expedition. Oh, these are the guys that got killed. This is I, I okay. skipped ahead early. So these Okay, so you have you have a few names over there. You have, for example, if you scroll up. We got Weatherby you, Turnbull. Like yeah, Dr. Turnbull and archaeologist James okay. Windebank and Andrew Weatherby. Yeah. Are those the three victims? I think those are the three dead people. I'm going to look at that again. Weatherby's one of them, for sure. Yeah, I'm not sure the other ones are. I'm going to look at that. March 5th. Archaeologist Police. dead in mummy's tomb. Okay, there's the first death, Ebenezer Turnbull. Arnett, <laughs> March 4th, Professor Ebenezer Turnbull. Remaining in the chamber alone. Oh, wait, let's let's read it. After. Because it's, maybe there's some... Um, this one? Yeah, maybe there's some information about... The inner chamber was reached early in the year after much difficult labor, and the archaeologists were quite ecstatic over the excellent condition of the sarcophagus, chamber artifacts, and the catabet mummy itself. The party was in the final weeks of its work in the area when disaster struck. Mr. Turnbull had worked late into the night, remaining in the chamber alone after other members of the party had retired for the night. His body was discovered by Mr. Andrew Weatherby, another of the project archaeologists. Mr. Turnbull had been strangled to death. Ancient linen Ancient. bandages were found about his neck. Upon hearing of the professor's death, several of the natives working on the excavation called upon Isis and Osiris for protection and for forgiveness for disturbing the sacred tomb. Okay. And then, and then at that point, other people died too. All right. So let's, what else can we do here? Uh, and then don't go here. Okay, let's uh, go over the yeah. directory, see who who we can talk to. Uh, okay. Is this everybody? No. So these are the regulars, the ones that we should talk to no matter what to get as much information as possible. And these are... Jeez, a lot of people. Yeah, but we don't have to talk to all of them. We can talk to the regulars to get more information. And then if we need to visit another person or another location, then we'll go to the index. Okay. All right. Um, regulars. So go back to the regulars. Yeah. Let's talk to them. Okay. okay. Who do you want to talk to? Pick, pick a regular Tori. Well, I can't even remember who all these people are. How about, um, you can go with your favorite name. Visit all of them. Yeah. yeah, maybe the inspect inspector to get some, some more information Let's about the. Do it. Let's. So it says. Okay, so now the so, send, send the detectives. You're going to talk to them, okay. or the irregulars, and they'll get back with more information if you need. And search Holmes's file is to see if there's anything listed in them. But send the re send the detectives is having them. Go over to that location and talk to the person. Well, let's do it. Let's try that. Yeah. Let's just let's just start here. Although talking with Lestrade is often tedious, and the inspector is condescending, Holmes and Watson visit Scotland Yard, hoping the man has done his due diligence in this case and can offer insight. <laughs> well, well. If it isn't Mr. Sherlock Holmes, London's most overly praised amateur sleuth, needing the help of the yard praised. again. So you're going to stand for that, Holmes? Let's just see who proceeds to solve this case, Watson. Inspector Lestrade, my good man, I'm looking into the cause of James Windebank's death. <laughs> I should have known. That murder has brought out every crank in the city. I think the professional police can wrap this one up. All the same, could you tell us what you've discovered to date? One dead archaeologist, no suspect, uh, no motive. And what of Andrew Weatherby's death? Have you looked into that? I have talked to Captain Ramsey, but uh, we have no leads. These are, Look, this is a really good quality sure video for 1991. And if it doesn't, yeah. you're not going to find me worrying about it. As it is, I have enough murders to take care of. 
<laughs> now, are these Americans with uh, with British accents, or did they get British actors? That's no, what I, I want to know. These are British actors with that's a, a theater background. Yeah, that's what I, I got to. Do we resume or replay? Resume. Uh, Let's see if it's well, same no, we, thing. Resume so, is the same. Holmes, London, well, then why do we, they have two options with yeah, replay? Resume and re well, well, if it isn't just a show. What the heck? Never mind. Exit. That, that seems silly, right? We got yeah, two options. It does. It does. It thing. does. Resume. You would think it would come continue. on now. Okay, let's do. Let's. Um, uh, hmm. Okay, but there let's were three. Send... There were three murders, though. Yeah. One on the ship. Let's visit oh, Ellis Henry. He's the first one. All right. And do we want to visit him, or do we want to send the irregulars? No, let's visit him. Okay. Sounds good. Watson hails a carriage, and he and Holmes proceed to the office. Oh, we're on the right track. We found a key clue. Really? What do we do? Surely Henry, as the editor of the Times, would have some interesting news regarding this case. It's quite amusing, all this hoopla over a mummy's curse, I must say. Not so amusing, of course, the murder of three Englishmen. Have any of your reporters uncovered anything new? Actually, I've been in Paris the past several weeks. Just returned to London on Tuesday. I've had no involvement with the writing of any of these articles. I believe they are all the work of Philip Travis. He's one of our young reporters. For a short time, he was the Egyptian correspondent. Was he sacked? No, no. He returned to London just a few days ago. I gather he was reassigned to cover the case. have to write some stuff down here. Huh? Yeah, right now. Get a notebook. Egypt. Do you know Travis? No. Got me a notebook. Never actually met the chap, although I hear he's a bit of an odd duck. Thanks for your help, Henry. Anytime. Let me know when you catch the mummy. That's one scoop I'd like to get. Okay, so did you write the name down? No, what was yeah. his name again? Travis. Philip Travis. Travis. Philip Travis? Yeah. yeah, we need to go talk to Travis. Phil Let's Philip go Travis. talk to Philip Travis. Is that two L's or one? Replay or resume? Exit. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? Philip Travis, one L. All right. I don't trust any Philip with just one L. <laughs> Send the detectives? Yeah, sure. Sure. We decide to travel to Mr. Travis's home alone, leaving Watson in the company of Mrs. Hudson and her apple cranberry cakes. Who's Mrs. Watson? Mrs. Hudson. We got to talk to her. She's next. She's next on our list. All right. So you've been reading my articles in the Times. I'm honored. What do you think of them? Quite interesting. You've clearly been following the murders quite closely. Who do you suspect? I believe it is the work of the ancient Egyptian god Pumatef and his goddess Neith. Be serious. I couldn't be more <laughs> serious. You see, Mr. Holmes, although I am a journalist, I was actually trained as an Egyptologist. I know all about these mysteries. That's why my articles carry the force of truth. And what is the truth, Mr. Travis? The truth is that the Egyptians discovered the secret of life. What we call science is mere child's play compared to the knowledge they had. Look at this. Do you know what this is? It appears to be a mummified animal of some sort, a monkey, perhaps. Precisely. Write a conversation piece. I've been using it in some very important experiments, which, if successful, will unlock the secret of bringing back the souls of the dead. I've been working on it, Mr. Holmes, using these tanner leaves. Watch. Mr. Travis is a nut job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> Write down, nut job. Oh, my lord. Oh, my lord. Cantina. <laughs> He's too crazy to be a suspect. Oh, darn it. It appears he didn't come the soul away. of this particular monkey has no intention of making a reappearance. It's only a matter of time. I know it is. After all, these secrets have been buried for thousands of years. These things don't happen overnight. But it will happen someday. This is my mission. I believe I'll leave you to your work, mm. Mr. Travis. I don't my, forget. Uh... But let me show you more. Don't quit your day job, Travis. Some of the time, perhaps. Okay, so a hey, question, why, Daniel? Why is the video so good? Is this because they found? Is it? Are they using the video? They the, no, the I think this is an AI upscale or some sort of upscaling. Wow, they did a great job. This is so much better than anything else out there, right? Mm. It's a 2015 remaster, says Timothy. Yeah. But how did they remaster? They must have had whoever it was didn't throw all their 
their resources away. They were the, able to do the, the person who bought the VHS tapes in that garage sale uploaded them to YouTube, and that's of pristine quality, better than this. This looks wow. like an upscale of the 1991 original. So Gotcha. Yeah. Schottenjäger wrote, I recently read the first two Sherlock Holmes novels. They were a surprisingly good read. I've never read any Sherlock Holmes. Have you guys? I read several, yeah. I have, yeah. yeah. I'm... And have you read them recently or when you were much younger? Oh, well, a long time ago. Yeah. When I was I a kid. Okay. I wonder. I'd be curious to read them now. All right. Let's do it. Yeah. What's next? Uh, I have Miss Hudson. You want to check her out? She has. Yeah, Miss uh, Hudson. Did... There, there she is. There she go. Let's check out Mrs. Hudson. I don't get the difference of why would we send the irregulars when we could just go. So, there for ourselves? example, I don't know if you want to know more about Travis Phillip, then you send the irregulars, and then they get back with things that you know okay. unconventional methods uh, may get you. Okay, so let's go to let's do that. Let's go to Travis Phillip. We're going to send the irregulars. Watson asks two of the most trusted lads to follow up on an important lead. He sends them to the home of Phil Travis, sometimes good at the times. Okay, now we get some information. A message from an irregular. The shutters were drawn tight. Heard some weird chanting. I think I did. And that's it. Hmm, that's What's a question? Okay. The uh, Baker Street Rose can be sent to gather valuable information and get a letter to you quickly. Be wise in how you send them. Sending oh, an irregular to a valuable location will cost you five clue points, but sending them to a dead end will cost you ten. Did we did we get five clue points or I think we just got a dead end. Okay, how do we, we know what open. how do we know what our uh, our clue points are? Oh, it doesn't matter. Let's okay. play the game. Okay. okay. Um, so do we want to go to Miss Hudson? Or do is there are there other people with criminology? What do you got? What do you guys think, Scott? Yeah, we got a bunch of places we can go. Um, yeah. Let's see. Well, what else do we have? We have there's lots a of notebook, things. Too. The shipping the register judge. could tell us who was on the boat, who could be a suspect. But oh, do we write notes like... in here? Well, you can talk to the. That's clue the history. Men, oh, these are our notes. Okay, okay. The men visit Scotland Yard, but even though Lestrade has spoken with Captain Ramsey, the inspector has no idea who killed these men. Holmes and Watson visited. Oh, this is cool. Henry Trell, Ellis. No, did we? Okay. They learned that Ellis had been out of town and Philip Travis has been writing articles for the Times. We asked Philip Travis and discovers that the journalist believes he's a cuckoo pants. Ellis was uh, the Times guy. Irregulars, re okay. correspondents. Okay, this is cool. No, we don't. Uh, want I don't remember instead, having but... this in the original game. This is something really? from the remaster. Yeah, this is cool. I had, this I had is to write hard. things down. I don't want to write things down. They're doing it for me. Okay, can, so cool. Like a caveman. Back to um, the directory. Okay. Um, so, so, do you know the the names of the people who were murdered? Yeah, yeah one was. Weatherby. Weatherby, right? Uh, and then there's another. Ooh. Andrew, Clarissa, Weatherby. Windebank. And there's Windebank. a Weathersby. Yeah, Windebank. 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 Okay, well, should we check on him? But he's dead. Oh, he's Weatherby. Dead, Andrew but maybe and you can visit his family. Right. I was just going to say if Weatherby says Andrew and Clarissa, we could see Clarissa. No, but even when you go to visit James, he's dead. Oh, the family will be there. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Armed with information, he has discovered both in the times and conversations of the reliable sources. Holmes sets out alone in hopes of a revelatory conversation with Windebank's widow. James was so to... thrilled when Dr. Turnbull invited him to join the expedition. He felt he had spent his entire life reading books about archaeology and now was finally getting an opportunity to go out into the field. Tell me, Mrs. Windebank. When your husband returned, that is, did he discuss he is the lacking of his colleagues in sideburns? Of course. James was extremely upset. I know he did not believe a curse to be responsible. My husband was a man of science. So he man was the third one. He was the last one to die. Whether so we really didn't learn anything. What did we learn? That he was a man of science. Yeah, but that's... Okay. Uh, we want to try Weathersby? Was he one of oh, the that ones? Was Windebank. Yeah, let's do Weatherby. Yeah. Uh, there's a Weatherby and a Weathersby's. 
Yeah. No, Andrew Weatherby is one of the... Weatherby? What? Oh, we got another key. Watson asks as Holmes reaches for his dear stalker hat. The great detective reminds the good doctor of the articles in the paper and the unfortunate demise of Andrew Weathersby. I'm very sorry to intrude on you in your moment of grief. Oh, that's quite all right. You know, Andrew and I hadn't been married very long. Long enough to know if he had any enemies? Oh, Andrew was so unassuming. Everyone liked him. Including Mr. Rubaru? <laughs> <laughs> I really loved my husband. <laughs> Who is I'm that? Sure Who is a boobaroo? Oh, English toffee. My favorite. Would you like one? Please. <laughs> Sorry. You'll have to open this yourself. I've never been any good with these things. Hmm. Whoa, 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 whoa. How do we... Let's resume because uh, it means we're going to keep no, going, I'm right? I'm very sorry to intrude on you in your moment of... What's with the replay resume thing? That's just well, actually the, the only thing wrong. I see. The only difference I see between the two is resume plays the the same video without the subtitles, while replay does it with the subtitles. I, I don't That's understand. Weird. I don't understand that. Um, what was the point of her not being able to open the box? That seems to be a clue. Hmm. Why would Write she not down. be able to open it? Write it down. <laughs> Can't open box. <laughs> She's got. Did she injure her hand when she was strangling? Ah, uh, I see. I see what you're doing. Let's see. What does it say here? We got more stuff. The great detective visited the home of the late Windebank. He learns from his wife that James didn't believe in curses and considers himself a man of science. Asks about Clarissa's husband. She only admits to loving her husband, but she doesn't. And she also has arthritis. Okay. Okay. Since they talked about Mr. Ubaru, I know who it is. Let's go to the judge. Ubaru. No, Ubaru. Let's go talk to Ubaru. It was so funny the way he said it. <laughs> Where are you, Ubaru? Here he is. Oh, there he is. Ubaru. We got to talk to him. The good doctor receives a telegram, summoning him to the home of one of his patients. Holmes sells a carriage and proceeds to Mr. Uruburu's home in hope of a clue or two. <clears throat> I just want to hear if him say his name again. inconvenient time, perhaps I can <laughs> come back, Mr. Uruburu. I wouldn't hear of it. <laughs> just a bit of a hangover. I've weathered plenty worse than this. I'm investigating the death of Andrew Weatherby. You were on the ship with him out of Cairo. Did you happen to make his acquaintance? Weatherby, a most tedious fellow. So tedious, one might want to do him in. Don't be preposterous. In my condition, I couldn't have done anything of the sort. What condition was that? And I thought you were a great detective. The first night out, a few of us threw a bit of a bash that went on until we docked in London. Did hmm. Mrs. Weatherby attend this particular bash? She was the guest well, why is he honor, so you might just... say. Mm. Could she? Was she able to? She was having an affair. Uh -huh. Maybe they were both at the same bash. Mm -hmm. Bashing. <laughs> what did we learn there? So let's see. Let's go back to the hit card. We learned something. Oh, 70 points. Our, our points are racking up. Yeah. Almost visited Mr. Uruburu. There he learns that a man apparently had a liaison with Miss Larissa Weatherby. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the who had thickens. the liaison? Uh, did the newspapers anything change? No. Same newspapers. Okay, now what... Uh, we could do... Uh, we could look at the ship registry and then find other people to interview. The shipping companies. Up on the right top. Lloyd's shipping register, maybe. Okay. How come they have a uh, little? Because it's under sh shipping companies. These are two shipping companies. Oh well, which oh Lloyd's or uh, Jardine, Mayton. <clears throat> I can't remember. I can't remember which. Hmm. 
Yeah, let's check it out. Isn't one shipping company like the next? Watson asks Holmes after a 10 minute explanation. Watson admits he stands corrected and follows the detective out the door. I didn't see a little, uh, we didn't get a clue achievement. This so seemed to be a dead Ooh. end. No one had oh, any information that could help us solve this case. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a photo. It's just a sketch. Okay. I like that though. Should we try the other one? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Way to go, Tori. You took us down a dead end. I'm sorry. After reading it. Oh, there we go. Now we have an important discovery. Harry's Watson into a carriage, believing that time is of the essence as they head over to the shipping company. Here is a passenger list you requested, sir. Name is Windebank. Ooh. Write oh, down the names. You wait, wait. I was... I, I, I blinked and I looked at the chat. What happened? Well, what now I, replay... I want to resume. Be... It'll... Okay. Here is a Abdullah Al Saud. Akram Fami. was there. Yeah. Did we know Philip Travis was there? Now yeah. we do. I'm sure well, I bet he's you not, this is I'm on sure our he's list. Not. He's too obvious. Well, if it's if it's not on our, our list, then let's. It'll be in our pause. notebook, right? Check the notebook. <laughs> oh, no. is it, uh... oh, here it is. Write oh, yeah. it down. No, they don't have to. They're right here. Yeah. So write them down. They're written down. They're written down right here. What do you need? Abdullah? Yeah, but if we about? if we need to talk to them, then instead of opening the the stupid notebook each and every time, write them down, and we'll have them accessible. Yeah, have them available for us to. Abdullah. Oh, we should just do their last names, I guess, huh? Maybe we should talk to uh, Louise and Merrill Fenwick. Uh, Zen Salpsa says, "I love watching um, Tori's gears turn." That's true. <laughs> well, she, um, I, I got us into a dead end. That's that's how. Well, you're the only you one who's knew. taking this seriously because you know what you're doing. Fenwick. Oh, there's two Fenwicks. I kind of not. I kind of don't. Figuring it out. Guru, Weatherby. Windebank. Have we talked to Windebank yet? No, he was dead, right? Windebank's dead. dead. Okay, so really it's no, Al Saud and Fami and Fenwick we need to figure out. I think that we talked to <clears throat> Windebank's widow. Yeah, we... Uh, what... Whether we talked to, yeah, we did. Okay. Al Saud Abdullah here, the third one. Abdullah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Holmes, no, nothing. Weird says, knows. I'm surprised Daniel's not trying to brute force the answer. I think weird that Dan know, Daniel knows the answer and he's just letting, he's, he's, being patient. Well, oh, I checked no. in with Mr. Al Saud's manservant, and and you discovered that Mr. Al Saud was not at home. But however, did you know that? Elementary, my dear Watson, I noticed some crumpet crumbs from the corner bakery stuck to your lapel. You haven't been gone long <laughs> enough to stop for tea and interview anyone at length. Most observant, sir. What? So Watson's <laughs> just being. Uh, he's 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 shirking his job opportunities. Is is he's not doing his stuff? So, how about Fami? How about the Phoenix or the, the um, what is it? Fenwick. Want to do Fenwick? Yeah, but where are they? Oh, there, uh, Marilyn Louise. Yeah. Fenwick. Come, come on, achievement. Did we get an achievement. Cap in hand, the men leave 221 Baker Street and journey to the other side of town to visit the haughty Fenwicks. They hope for a tidbit of information. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but I don't know anything about the death of old. Whatever his name was, Andrew Weatherby. Fact is, I only saw the gentleman once, just as we were boarding. And I'll tell you, I resented the first officers questioning us in the matter, and I resent yours. The whole voyage was a disaster from beginning to end. Our accommodations were positively abysmal. They wouldn't even let us bring Dickie into our cabin. Dickie? Her high-strung, distasteful little mutt. How can you say that, Meryl? You know Dickie is a blue-blooded Yorkshire terrier. <clears throat> we should look up Dickie. I'll be with you in just a moment, Dickie Coons. Oh, just a moment. He's a bit under <laughs> the weather, you know. That's why we were only able to stay in Egypt for two weeks. 
Dicky was so disappointed. He so wanted to see the Sphinx. Mr. Holmes is not interested. Tori, if only we had done our, our video games him. sitting in oh. chairs the entire time. No, I do, and talking like this. It would have been so nice to, to, to <laughs> battle the Mr. evil he spirits. adored me. <laughs> no doubt. Oh, for the love of God, Louise, spare us your blubbering. <laughs> <laughs> all right what did we learn i i don't know that we learned so, really anything so first of all it. if you remember when we played the seventh guest one of the things we've noticed is the fact that everyone's overacting because back in the day the resolution was so low that they had to be more expressive yeah. in order for you to see things that are happening because you didn't see facial expressions in that low of res resolution so everyone had a theater in background and had a background in theater, and that's why everyone's overacting. But it, it's kind of fun. It makes it fun and it yeah. does. Yeah. You know. All right. A mist seems to rise from the Thames as the men cross a bridge on their way to meet with Akram Fami, a handler of historical relics. Ooh. Hello, is anyone there? Oh, we got some good music here. Oh, we got some oh, movement. So. We got a shadow. Look. He's dead. Is he dead? Oh, what ghastly business. Everyone will assume the mummy has struck a game. Hardly a plausible He's assumption. got a knife in his this back. This poor fellow has a knife in his back and not a scrap of I said it first. about his neck. Mm. Oh, very observant, Holmes. Ring up Scotland Yard. This case is simple enough for them to solve. You've solved it already. Or is it? Elementary, my dear Watson. Obviously, it was the butler. Butler? What ah. butler? Exactly my point. A man as wealthy as Akram Fami would always have a manservant about him. After the foul deed, this one obviously beat a hasty retreat. Case solved. <laughs> Boom. Let's find the butler. Let's go. Now what? But, okay. now what? I, We've learned I, I something. Yeah. I don't... Did the other two... I'm sorry, but I can't remember. The, um, the first one was strangled. The other two... They were all strangled, right? They were strangled as well. Okay. With uh, they were all mummies. strangled with the mummies, with the same mummies. bandages. Muslim yeah. mummies, Muslim, Muslim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this guy was stabbed. So I don't think he's. So what do we do now? Let's look. Let's, let's check our notes. Uh, Holmes and Watson visited Akram and learned if he was murdered. A knife protruding from his back. That doesn't tell us nothing. Um, should we go to Scotland Yard? Let's go to Scotland Yard. <clears throat> yeah, let's do that. This is fun. I'm like a criminal investigations, yeah. criminology, criminal investigations. Mm -hmm. Although talking with Lestrade is often... Oh, we've done this already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, can we go back too late? I guess we're here. Maybe well, we have something well, new, though. If it isn't Mr. Sherlock Holmes, okay, you can click it and skip it. Hi, sweetie. What? Hi there, Jocelyn. <laughs> what happened? Zero cleft. The Sherlock actor gives me Paul Gleason vibes. Um, Paul Gleason. I don't know if I know Paul Gleason. Thank you, Zero cleft. Appreciate that. We only know Paul Morgan Settler. No other. <laughs> there's only one. Allowed. There's only room for one Paul in this stream. Um. Should we look at the list of um, people on the ship again? Have yeah. we looked? Good call. Let's do it. Um, you wrote them down. Oh, What's oh yeah. Written? Well, we've got uh, I'll, Abdullah. We got him. And we had Fami. And then the other ones were Fenwick. There were the people that we've already seen. Did we visit Fenwick? Two. Yeah, Fenwick. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we got to find something new here. What about the newspaper? Should we check it since this last murder? Hmm. Maybe we should talk to more regulars. Okay, yeah. Oh, the regulars. Oh, we haven't done that in a while. Or, or send We're... the regulars to do something. Let's... Oh, I didn't mean to send the regular there. No, you send the irregulars to Lestrade. I just did, though. I yeah, accidentally let, screwed let, up. Let, let's see. No, you didn't screw up. It's all good. Lestrade, Lestrade says, says that he's not one... Uh, he's, he's, he's got, got one, one dead, dead archaeologist. No suspect and no motive. Better get on it, Holmes. Looks like this one's up to you. Didn't tell us nothing. No. Oh. All right. Um. 
Do we want to send the regulars to somewhere else? No, the regulars. I'm not talking about the it's, irregulars. The regulars. We have a regulars tab regular? on the left that you can click on. Oh, oh yeah. Go to the directory. Yeah. We, we have the you regulars. Mean this big one right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. yeah one here. The one you you keep <laughs> on right. ignoring. <laughs> I like let's do Disraeli O'Brien. Okay. Office of Records Department as Watson insists the fresh air will do the investigation good. Holmes is not so sure, but humors the good doctor. I like it when the achievement thing well, pops Holmes, up. It appears we're out of luck. Yeah. The clerk told me that O'Brien yeah. is off on holiday. Uh, I really like these um, sketches Drawings. that yeah. show up. I, I think that's a really cool you, feature. Do you want to make a note that that's a dead end? <laughs> good call. Dead, end? dead ends. By the way, that's my middle name. Dead end? Israeli. Really? Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Wait, so say say your full name. Then Victoria. The Israeli more so. More so. Wow. My mom yeah. thought that was, you know, Queen Victoria, Disraeli, you know. <laughs> yeah. Dang. But it's O'Brien, Disraeli, O'Brien. Oh, that's I, a that's a lot of syllables. Good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a it's a it's a mouthful. I, I want to talk to Porky Shinwell, even though yeah. I don't want to ask him yet. I just like his I'm, name. I'm also Disraeli. You're Disraeli. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's a silent D. Yeah. A quick carriage ride takes Holmes and to the end to the Raven and Rat Inn. Oh, there we go. We can get a pint. Before stepping inside, the consulting detective is nearly flattened by an intoxicated patron stumbling from the inn. There was a couple of blokes in here just a fortnight ago. What are these real the places Eastern or are they Empress? just... No, it looks like a blue screen. Seen them before. Haven't seen them since. One was a swarthy fellow. Arab, unless I miss my guess. The other was an old English gent. I overheard hmm. him say something about a bird and later caught the name of the ship. I hope that helps you. Yeah, for a drink, yeah. Oh, geez. Holmes yeah, was Holmes. really concentrating. Did you see it? Yeah. Let's, let's just watch Holmes for a second. Watch how well he... There was a oh, couple boy. of blokes in here just a fortnight ago. What mentioned the Eastern Empress? Never seen them before. Haven't seen them since. One was a swarthy okay. fellow. Right Arab, here. unless I miss my guess. Right here, the watch him. was an old English gent. Right there. I overheard oh, him say really something about a bird and later caught the name of the ship. I hope that helps you. Get a drink, yeah. When uh, he says still, something about a bird, is he talking about a woman? You I know, think like, so. Yeah. Oh, Zero Cleft. Uh, for some reason, Zero Cleft, your your um text to speech isn't working, but thank you for your because kind the super chat donation. Paul Gleason was the principal in the Breakfast Club. There you go. I remember that guy. Another fun fact, Sherlock Holmes mostly uses inductive reasoning, not deductive. Hmm. hmm. It's not elementary. Thank you. And Zero Cleft and anybody else who happens to be watching right now, we will absolutely and always appreciate the, any donation you give us. But Super Chats and YouTube like to take a big giant cut for themselves. So if you do want to help get us to our goal today, the easiest, best way is to use the, uh, is it in the, on the, yeah, just the yeah. uh, uh, coffee.com with CWC and they allow us to keep the money that you are so generously donating. So if you want to in the future, please uh, maybe move over to coffee.com and you'll get, you'll still get your, your texts read aloud. Um, mm -hmm. all right, let's see what's next. And then Salps has said when uh, Tori said that her middle name is the Israeli, is Tori's mom knew she was raising a queen. Oh, of yes. course, she did. Okay, <laughs> flattery will get you everywhere, you guys. Yeah, um, I like libraries. You want to go to a library? Do we have other things? Yeah. What do you think, Daniel? Yeah, you let's go give to the library. Hint? Now go to the library. Let's go over the regulars and then take it from there. They can help us. Okay. I think so. 
My fog rolls in as Holmes and Watson take a carriage to the London Library. Watson insists they know more about mummies if they are going to solve these murders. Watson insists they know more about mummies. They would know. They will they, know more about they mummies. They learn more. It should they be they learn more. Come on, typos. Holmes is unconvinced, but accompanies the good doctor nonetheless. Here it is, Holmes. Egyptian mummies are embalmed bodies preserved to facilitate their resurrection. Many mummies have been found. And they Many are mummies. Almost always the bodies of pharaohs. The pharaohs believe that one day their bodies would be brought back to life. See History of Egyptian Mummies by Pettigrew, London, 1834. Very good one. <laughs> that sounded like a uh, uh, one of those clarifications at the end of a drug commercial. Yeah. yeah. It feels like they're trying to steer us toward thinking it's Travis, Philip Travis, because he wants to bring things back to life. But oh, that's good. I don't. Well, I think he's too yeah. obvious. I don't know. Maybe this first, maybe this first case is on the obvious side, so we can mm -hmm. we can uh, feel good about ourselves, and then it gets more complicated as we go. Um, what else? Just could also the the. So when they mention that. Um, um whether be what is it weatherby's wife no wait yeah weatherby's wife the one who was on the sh mm -hmm. who was mm -hmm. also who was having the, the affair or the other one yeah um are are we like who was the guy that was drunk that was hung over she wasn't having an affair with him right it was he was suggesting the it was Rubaru. somebody he sounds you sound drunk when you try to say his name i think that's why they <laughs> why he said it that way um <laughs> she's not okay I'm trying to think i well, didn't get this i kind of thought that maybe he was having an affair with her but it sounded like he was actually you know him. sort of talking out of school about her having an affair with someone else yeah, okay. And then the guy in the bar su suggested that there were two guys, the the, um, the Arab guy and an Englishman. Well, there's so many Englishmen in this. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. But, but what about Sir Jasper Meek? Should we? Yeah, let's check out Sir Jasper Meek. Should we check him out? A migraine sidelines the great detective while he sues himself. With a the bowl full of cocaine, wasn't oh, Holmes a cocaine? <laughs> Watson, oh, the... yeah, to discuss the murders with the medical examiner, hoping oh, for more evidence yeah. to support his growing hypothesis. Oh, so Sir Jasper Meeks is the medical examiner. I have a word examiner. with you, Sir Jasper. Ah, uh, Doctor Watson, of course. Are you investigating the death of Samuel Sneed? I just finished with him. No, we're interested in James Windebank. Ah, the mummy's latest victim, of course. <laughs> Now, who hired Holmes for this one? <laughs> King Tut? <laughs> oh, that's a jolly good one. Actually, we don't have a client on this one. Eh, just for fun, eh? Well, about the only thing I can tell you is that that mummy has very powerful hands. What do you mean? The trachea was crushed along with one of the vertebrae of the neck. Death was instantaneous. Well, this is good information. Snap. But the paper's reports say that the, there were mummy wrappings found round the neck. Uh, just window dressing. Uh, without uh -huh. question, it was bare hands. The bruises and the way that the vertebrae was crushed mm -hmm. leave no doubt about that. Thank you very much for your time. So it's Sir someone Jasper. who has strong hands. Not at all, Watson. Now you will mm -hmm. let me know when you've convicted the mummy. Beg your pardon? Well, so I can perform an autopsy on him. Would be most fascinating, don't you think? Hmm. So we know it's not the wife because she has weak hands. <laughs> That's right. Open. You can cross her off the list. She's off the list. Uh, we've already forgotten about the murder of the guy in the with his knife in the back. Is this all connected somehow, or is that just a no, red herring was, murder? That was Same a red guy? herring murder. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he said that the butler did it. It's the butler. Oh, that's so that's it. it. We're yeah. done. Okay, so we solved that case. So listen, we've already solved a case. Let's make sure we give ourselves a little credit for that. Yeah. Right? This is like a, just a, just like an episode of Doctor House, in which he, he has the clinic clinic hours in which he solves the case like in a matter of minutes, and then he got the yeah. major case in that episode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who is 
H.R. Murray and Langdale Pike. Let's talk to all of them. Bye -bye. Yeah, let's do it. Pettigrew wrote this book over 50 years ago, and there's still nothing better on the subject. Fascinating. Just fascinating. And what can I do for you today, Whitson? It's Watson, sir. Watson, yes, of course. We're interested in what you may have learned about this mummy case. Oh, so these days it's mummies you're chasing down with that fella, Helms. It's Holmes, sir. This is what I said now, isn't it, Whitson? Yes, I believe you did, sir. Uh, let me show you what I found so far. Uh, this is the bit of linen that was found round the neck of James Windebank. I examined it thoroughly and it is quite old, uh, perhaps thousands of years. However, it is not the murder weapon. Are you certain of that? Aye. The linen is quite old, but it's not at all strong enough to strangle a grown man. Very interesting, sir. I also found something quite fascinating. Uh, take a look through this glass. Uh, do you see those short hairs on the fabric? They look precisely like hairs. Of course Down they here. look like hairs. But what kind of hairs? They're not human hairs. They're dog hairs. No. Uh, now, Tori. This piece of oh, the dog. was found Remember around the, dog. the neck of the victim on board the ship. The that dog killed him. Leatherby or something. Uh, it is also quite old, and on it I found more hairs. More dog hairs? <laughs> no, my dear man, monkey hairs. Mm. I've not yet been able to identify the precise species, but it's just extraordinary, isn't it? Quite. But what do you think it all means? Well, I'm not the sort who the likes dog to killed the monkey. conclusions, Whitson. But I can assure you that monkey neither the dog? of these bandages were the murder weapons. Wow. The monkey killed. The monkey oh. had strong hands. Well, now that threw me off with the monkey. Hmm. Well, um, what have we... Let's talk to um, uh, Langdale Pike. Did we talk to him already? Oh, did we? We talked we to Porky Shinwell. Did no, we talk? I don't think we talked. No, we did not. You're right. Society's Club is not a venue that Holmes and Watson frequent, let alone belong. However, the detective know that Langdale Pike knows what goes on behind closed doors more than anyone in London. I know only a very little about two of the unfortunate gentlemen. I do recall that Turnbull was quite an eccentric chap. I don't believe he ever married, nor did he take his rightful place in London society. And what of Windybank? A quiet academic sort, as far as I can tell. Married to a woman called Hildegard. There was one spot of controversy that I can recall. It seems a few years back he had a run-in with the Anti-Vivisectionist League. No, oh, but of course. It seems that during a lecture on the advancement of science, he spoke of the autopsy of his own pet. A recently deceased Yorkshire Terrier. Well, I can tell you the Times received a great deal of letters to the editor condemning him on that one. <laughs> Even one from a <laughs> Louise Fenwick who threatened to vivisect him. Oh, dear. Well, then I surmise it's Weatherby you know nothing about. Well, now that you mention it, I believe he was assisting Professor Windebank in that lecture series. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. What a, what does that mean? Wait, who was assisting him? I missed that because my brain Windebank. was going. Windebank. Windebank was assisting him. Assisting who? Uh, that he was assisting. Wait, let's do it again. What was wait, it? Wait, wait, I just need to hear that again. I know only a very here. little about two of the unfortunate gentlemen. I do recall the weather. It was assisting weather. Eccentric chap. I don't believe he ever met. Yeah, he was assisting Weatherby. Windebank oh. was assisting Weatherby. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, they all okay. Um, so, Shinwell, did we? We've done him? Porky already. Okay. Somerset House. Somerset House. Quick carriage ride takes Holmes and Watson to the Somerset House. Certainly, oh. they will have information on the wills of the dead men. Law Mr. Office. Turnbull apparently left what little he had to the Egyptology department at London University. And Windbank left everything to his wife, Hildegard. What about Weatherby? Ditto. Everything was left to his wife, Clarissa. Although being such a young chap, it hardly seems that he had much to leave at all. Okay, okay so we know it's not Clarissa. 
it do we do be. HR Murray already? Do we do what have we gotten everybody? Do we do yeah. we didn't really start at the top, did we? Yeah, we did. Edward Hall, do we do him? No, I don't think so. Visit Hall will yield similar results. The carriage ride is uneventful and for un uh Sorry, fellows. I don't mean to be brusque, but I am too occupied at the moment to concern myself with these so-called mummy murders. Perhaps if the mummy's solicitor were to contact me, then perhaps I would consider defending him. That's it, huh? The whole scene for that? <clears throat> okay. Quentin? Do we do Quentin Hogg? I don't remember. I think we did Alice and then Lestrade and then we went over the rest. Now, the thing what does strike me as odd is the passenger list of the Eastern Empress. Now, I'm not saying it has anything to do with the mummy murders, mind you, but it was a bit out of the ordinary. What was Hogg? Uh, Akram Pami, for starters. He's a well-known importer, he is, for a price. A not considerable anymore. price, by all accounts. He can acquire whatever oh, no. one's heart desires, be it jewels, art objects, or even wild animals, if that's what you fancy. I'd say he was on board that ship to transport something very valuable. The presence of one high-powered importer on a London-bound vessel is hardly reason for suspicion. Right, oh, but Abdullah al Saad was also on board. Oh, yes, the well-known agent for the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. You never miss a trick, do you, Holmes? Well, whatever it was what Farmy was carrying, I'd say it was something those Turks wanted to get their hands on. It wasn't, isn't Fami the one who was, was Fami the one who was killed? Yeah, the, the one with a butler killing him. Yeah. Okay. What do we know? We, uh, uh, Spectre Lestrade, did we do him? We yeah. did him, yeah. Yeah, we did him okay. twice. Did him twice. Should we do it one more time? Uh, okay. What, where should we, should we look at our clues? Um, who, wait, um, what was the first guy that he mentioned? The, um. Uh, it was, uh, oh, stop. Bo the both points. of them are people we already visited. He mentioned Abdullah, El Saud, and we visited him. Oh, okay. Who tells him that a passenger list shows that there were two Arabs aboard the ship, the Eastern Empress. Holmes and Watson visit Edward Hall, but the young barrister's too busy. Texas visit Somerset House. That Turnbull's contribution to the university, the murdered men left their estates to their wives. We also learned that, oh, what happened? Uh, while the linens are old, they did not kill the men. They also learned that they have dog hair and monkey hair. So the dog hair and the monkey hair. So is there like a zoo? We got any kind of zoo thing? Wait, go back. can you go back to the notebook? Yeah. Um, what the uh, Holmes learned from Pike that not only was Weatherby assisting Windebank in the men's lecture series at the university, but Louise Fenwick was angry about an autopsy the professor performed on his own dog. Now, wasn't Louise the woman who was like all, she had the dog that she was talking to off stage. She was with that yeah. man. And yeah, okay. He's quite certain that the linens did not kill strong hands crushed. Let's go see what the, is there a zoo? Is there something to, how do we get, how do we know more about a monkey? Zoological gardens. Ha ha. Holmes drag, I wanted to see like, I wanted to feel like a, Holmes is dragged from his armchair by Dr. Watson, who promptly stuffs him into a carriage headed for the zoo. It appears that they've just left. There are fresh oh, they just left. The zoo the left. But look, Holmes, there are also some coming towards the door. <laughs> Terribly observant, Watson. However, the prints you are looking at belong to us. Uh, all right. Well, that's... Where else are we going to find a monkey? I think it all... If we find a monkey, we're good. Maybe let's look under M. Monkey, monkey... Oh, drats. National Gallery. Hmm. <clears throat> so Jasper Meek, Stella Mummy. We, Stella there's a mummy. person named Mummy. We should talk to her. I think that's probably a. I think it's a red herring. That's what you call a red herring. 
Well, I thought, you know, if her last name was Mummy, that someone would mention the murders to her, and she might be of some help, Watson explains to an incredulous <laughs> Sherlock Holmes as he heads out the door. What did you learn, Watson? Not a thing, Holmes. You learned nothing? Don't get testy, Holmes. There wasn't anyone about. My humble apologies, Watson. Oh, I, right. I get it that there are dead ends that they need to cover without filming another FMV scene, but it seems like whoever is not at home is off the hook. I think so. Yeah. Newspapers. Um, we haven't done any newspapers. Hmm. Police Gazette? Yeah, Police Gazette. Gazette. Well... Because that's a cut in the fog. Since the reporter loves nothing more than one side conversation, Holmes fears a long afternoon ahead. Oh boy! Now the thing what we've done him on. Yeah, the we did. But... The... How about the uh, financial? Financial Times. Watson simply shakes his head and keeps walking. When Holmes facetiously asks, "What kind of financial motive the killer or a mummy, for that matter, would have in this case?" This seemed to be a dead end. Ah. No one had any information that could help us solve this case. Okay. Dang it. All right. Well, okay. So we can either send the regulars to the people we've already interviewed. Well, or we can solve um, the case. Who do we think it is? I don't know anybody with big hands. Um... There's so many people we haven't even. Johnny Bulldog. That's probably a red herring. Do you think we have enough information to solve the case? Daniel seems to think no. so. Well, could it no. be Fen? Is it Fenwick? The husband? Maybe he was having an affair with uh, Clarice. Uh, that, that has nothing to do. I mean, I just am. Not clear as to did, did we visit Fenwick? The motive yet. So, we did. But, then maybe send the regulars. Let's send the irregulars. Not a hand is raised when Watson asked the boys who was up for visiting the Fenwicks. So a few additional pence finally buy him a willing candidate. Who are you kidding, Holmes? Those blue bloods wouldn't talk to the likes of us. That doesn't do any it did. Mm. Uh, we need one of those achievement unlocked moments all right hey chat what do you guys got anybody it's jump in there and tell us what you think is there a contact listing for a gorilla no what's what's elephant and castle that's a pub we should try that oh um, should we try that or we should send the irregulars to the pub oh we should send the irregulars to that other to porky Okay. This seemed to be a dead end. Let's end. No one had any Another information dead. that could help us solve this case. All right. Okay. Let's what send were you to saying? Porky. Uh, yeah, let's send. Wow. Uh, Porky. What's his last name? What's Porky's last name? You have to click on the regulars. It'll give us Porky's last name. Porky Shinwell. Shinwell. Shin. Yeah. <clears throat> send the irregulars. Let's set it. Come on, I want the achievement thing. Porky overheard an Arab talking with an English gent about a ship named the Eastern Empress. That's new. I already know that. Yeah, we already <laughs> I know guess it's that. Not new. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that at the same time Paul said, That's new, and you well, yelled, We already, we know, already that. know that. <laughs> uh is there someone named Big Hands McGinley? <laughs> uh, let's get a hint. I want to get a hint. Well, I feel like we should just go to all the, scroll down each all, list of, oh, clue hints. Okay. Sure. Let's go. Press the Watson's hint button to request a hint. An article in the newspaper from August 17, 88. Mentions an excavation in the names of three men. Note the location of the lecture. So August seventeenth, nineteen eighty-eight. Oh, wrong one. Hmm. 
Births, marriages, whoa. Wait, Charges let's... of murder, mysterious death, appeal to the poet, Portugal. No, scroll up. Try it. Uh, it's in the excavations. You know that article I tried to direct you to at the beginning of the live stream. Are you... So... Oh, the Egyptian expedition excavating Kibet tombs at the head of the Valley of the Kings near Karnak and Luxor. Is that it? Saturday's lecture was illustrated. So James Windebank and Andrew Weatherby are embarking this week on excavating a tomb at the head. But that's not the the clue was. Is Where this is the, the location? Sunday's the lecture was illustrated by photographs thrown on a screen by the electric on the various stages character. Preface his lecture, but where is the lecture? At the London, London University, University, University College. College. London University of College. It's the very first line. Okay, let's go to London University. No, oh, no. I, almost, I almost did that. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> uh, let's go to London University. Are you here? Nope, wrong one. Let's go to. There we go. Uh, where's the achievement? Come on. Watson states the obvious when he recommends a trip to the up to Oh, we got an achievement. There's their Fallen. achievement. Almost commends the good doctor and ushers him right out the door. Fading somewhere. Such a tragedy. Fine men all and such outstanding scholars. I still can't quite get over the shock of it. We understand. Professor... We're looking for background information on these three men so that we can understand how their murders might be. These backgrounds together. look okay well, if they're all Dr. green screen. It's, it's good. No, if this is not green screen. Was responsible for organizing the Cartwright expedition. <laughs> Quite a remarkable man, really. This was the first time he teamed up with James Windebank. Professor Windebank was one of our most popular lecturers. In fact, several of his former students were also eager to accompany him. I recall him saying that he was having difficulty choosing. Weatherby turned out to be the lucky one. There's going to be some far from jealousy, now, doesn't it? I suppose Smith and Travis turned out to be the lucky ones after all. Smith, Smith and Travis. Smith and, and Travis. Travis. Peter Smith accepted the invitation to join another expedition. As for Philip Travis, he was quite keen on accompanying Professor Winterbank. In fact, he became exceedingly upset when Andrew Webb, oh, he looks very guilty the postgraduate there. Look how guilty in the he department, looks. was chosen instead. Oh, it's Travis. Took it rather it, personally. It's so obvious. It's so obvious. <sighs> should we? Should we? Should we? Should we just say it's Travis? You know what, Tori? You it's don't Travis. trust yourself. You always are right, and then you, but you think it's too. Oh, well, Daniel has accused me of this a couple of times, where, where I, I just don't want to do the obvious thing, and I move on. But I think should we, should we uh, here? Let's do Sunday Detectives about Travis, and then we'll we'll no, Sunday send the regulars. The re right? regulars. Hey, right, yeah. Watson asks two of the most important. He sends them to the film field. Travis. The shutters were drawn tight. Heard some weird chanting. I think oh, we oh, did yeah. that already. Um, all right, let's. Do you want to? Do you want to try? It's one thirty. We got. Sure, let's, let's try. Let, let's. We're going to the judge. Holmes and Watson leave two twenty one Baker Street and hurry to the Queen's Court to present their case before the magistrate. Armed with information about the mummy murders, the detectives cut a swath through the London fog and head to the Queen's Court, believing they have solved the case of the three dead Englishmen. Holmes and Watson hail the carriage and are whisked away to the Queen's Court. Hear ye, hear ye. Queen's Court now stands in order. I love it. Wait, now what? Resume. Hear ye, hear ye. What? The Queen's <laughs> Court now stands in order. Okay, so exit. I'm confused. How do we give him? How do we tell him? Okay. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. It. Travis. Yes, my lord. Tell me then. Who Travis is right Ebenezer there. Yeah. Turnbull's murderer. Ready? Yeah. 
Why did Travis kill Ebenezer? So certain. What was Travis' motive for killing Turnbull? Travis felt that the tomb of Caterbur should be left undisturbed. No, he publicly and Lambas, because of their mutual interest in Clarissa Weatherby, Turnbull refused to honor Travis's press credentials, barring him from the excavation site, thus jeopardizing Travis's job. Turnbull publicly lambasted Travis for questioning the doctor's credentials. I think it's closer to two, right? He's not having... I don't yeah, think... think no, he seems too crazy to be... About... Yeah, she... yeah, I think the second one. What do you think, Daniel? Oh, you know, right? Yeah. All right, let's try the second one. But the way he said, yeah, uh, Tori... I know. That's, he said it in a way that was sounded disappointed. Maybe he's he, disappointed. It just was like, yeah, you guys you guys kind of dis. I feel like he's telling us something. I but let's know. let's stick with it and see. Oh. Terribly no. sorry, gentlemen. That is not at all correct. See, well, I knew these seemed too obvious, but maybe it was just the reason that was wrong. But was is it the reason? Yeah, that's the question. Is it the reason or is it the person? How do we know that, Daniel? Well, we can try to figure out whether the things that are said in all of the four answers are mentioned by anyone. Like, for example, one of the answers being... The main reason for for Fulton. Okay, so you're gonna go to the judge. Okay. No, I'm gonna get out. Can I get out of this? All right. That's. Yeah. That's. No, uh, you you already oh. chose. Okay. Ah, uh, we might as well do the third one then. Who was Ebenezer Turnbull's murderer? Okay. Hold on. Let's hear this. Top fuel tipped six pieces of eight. What did Doctor Watson say about Sherlock? There's no police like Holmes. There's no police like Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Thanks, Top Fuel. All Thank right. You. Wow, we're... Turnbull publicly we're... lambasted Travis for questioning the doctor's credentials. Okay. Hmm. I don't remember that, but I... Wait, did you break the game? I might have broke the game. No. Let's try uh, yeah. Wow. Well done. It's because you click the close button, I think. Instead Shoot. of choose. Oh crap. Are you taking Oh over crap. Here? Yeah. All right, I'm going to use this moment to take a quick break. You're going to you're going to do some uh you're going to you're going to do some deducing. Oh, yeah, man. I'll be right back. <laughs> crap. Games Okay. Let me close the Oh, no wait. Mm -hmm. If I close the game then Everything will uh, uh -oh. give me a sec. Whoa. Hey, it's not well was I supposed to save? Daniel's the one who's supposed to save. We starting from top? Okay. Play the game. Resume a saved game. Okay. Let's see if we have everything in our note notebook. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Way to go. Way to go, remastered game. Nice job. <laughs> Knowing that we would forget. So, yeah, it's got auto save, but due to the fact that we had to. Uh, force quit the game I wasn't sure that it was gonna work anyway hear ye, hear ye. The Queen's okay court take control now stands in order all right Next. resume Mr. okay Holmes, I understand you've been looking into the mummy murders all right so yes my lord Philip Travis. I don't think you've. I don't think you've given it to me. Is, is it? Oh right. Sorry. Just okay. a sec. Oh, you've got control, right? Oh, yeah, okay. So now we're do number three. But let's wait for Tori to get back. So what was Turnbull publicly Turnbull? lambasted Travis, questioning the doctor's credentials. That doesn't seem right. The, the, Timothy Bow says watching is giving me an itch to play. 
play the game. Have a great rest of your day. You know, the game is on sale at the moment on Steam. I don't think he's saying, he didn't say play this game. He said play a game. <laughs> I think he's, he's like, I'm he's ready to play something that's a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, he's watching alley. us and he says, screw this. I'm going to play Doom. Exactly. Watching you guys makes me want to do something else. <laughs> <laughs> Just like our pinball live stream, which probably convinced you know there were some people pretty good not. comments on it. We actually made a lot of people want to play pinball, which is kind of funny. I was telling Daniel at the beginning of the stream. So at the end of the stream, Daniel and I kind of agreed to take a break and to stop playing so much and to stop. Uh, and then, of course, I went on and played yesterday, and I I got like three hundred and something million and i thought oh no i'm gonna break daniel's record i was really on the verge of breaking it and i thought what do i do because we had promised that we weren't gonna keep one-upping each other and then luckily and unluckily i didn't get past 320 million which wasn't even my record but uh but yeah it's it's a, an addiction okay we're gonna try this other one Tori. yeah let's try the third yeah. one but i personally i don't remember see so yeah, Travis, but let me just re, re, Travis is the reporter, the cuckoo guy who thinks that he can make the mummies come back to life, right? Yeah. I don't remember him being particularly frustrated that Travis questioned the doctor's credentials. Who's the Turnbull publicly lambasted Travis? For questioning which doctor, which doctor's credentials, doctor. I don't know. This is probably the answer, but I don't know why it's the answer. His own, his own Turnbull's own credentials, I think. Oh, Travis but killed Turnbull I'm because Turnbull. Think, I feel like Travis is just too obvious. But I, I hmm. quick question: This Smith, this other guy, Smith. Yeah, we have Smith. Did we ever look him up? Did we ever talk? We, we never did look him up, but it's too late. We have to do this now, and he's going to say okay. no or yes. And what of Andrew Weatherby? Who murdered him? Oh. Oh, okay, oh. so we did We did good. Who's Andrew? Oh. Oh, wait, so what? No, that's just... Yeah. This is so the so that was the correct answer, because now he asked, uh, he's asking yeah. us who murdered Andrew Weatherby. Oh, that was the correct. Okay. How about Peter Smith? We should say Peter Smith because we just heard but, his name and he's connected to Travis. That's my suggestion. But was he even on? No, Smith wasn't. Wait, Weatherby was killed on the sh ship? We can go back to. We, I don't think we can get out of here. I think we can. Okay. We have to. Let's get out of was, here. One was killed. We can. In, in, one was killed in by the tomb. One was killed in the ship. Where was the third one killed? The third was on the in, ship. In, like on their at their house, right back on their. Okay, or on let's, the let's choose the wrong answer. Oh, the game is broken again. Really? Yeah. Jeez. Uh. Why the remaster? Well, Zuki's wondering why we're assuming it's not the same person. Wow, Daniel. You could have a different reason for killing each is, person, each that guy. That is a very busy desktop you got there. It's a work of art. Okay, Dang. let me let me tell you so my. So the video secret. volume should be up a little higher, and the game volume should be down a little bit. No, there the you game go. volume, yeah. He could have, he's probably got a different reason for killing each one. Resume a save game. Okay. Okay. So anyway. We've we... already solved the death, the stabbing. That that one's been solved. He just said it was the butler. That was kind of a red herring uh, murder. Yeah. So we're not worried about that one. What was no, the last location we visited? The last location we visited Something about, was. About the men talked with Lawrence Feld at the London News interview. So they teamed up with Windebank and Weatherby for the Cadabet expedition. Apparently, there were hard feelings from those who were left behind, which was Smith and Travis, right? Mm -hmm. and okay, so you want now to watch that one again? The London now let's news. figure out. Uh, <laughs> you want such a tragedy 
fine men all and such outstanding scholars. I still can't quite get over the shock of it. We understand. Professor, we're looking for background information on these three men so that we can understand how their murders might tie together. Well, let me begin with Dr. Turnbull. Ebenezer Turnbull was responsible for organizing the Carterbed expedition. Quite a remarkable man, really. This was the first time he teamed up with James Windebank. Professor Windebank was one of our most popular lecturers. In fact, several of his former students were also eager to accompany him. I recall him saying that he was having difficulty choosing. Weatherby turned out to be the lucky one. Though it seems far from it now, doesn't it? I suppose Smith and Travis turned out to be the lucky ones after all. Smith so, yeah. and Travis? Peter Smith accepted the invitation to join another expedition. As for Philip Travis, he was quite keen on accompanying Professor Winderbank. In fact, he became exceedingly upset when Andrew Weatherby, a postgraduate student in the department, was chosen instead. Took it rather personally, I should say. So I don't know if Peter Smith, he took a different expedition. So I don't think yeah, he's really going to be in, uh, someone to worry about. Um, we should ask, we should probably check. Well, so he would, he killed, Travis killed Weatherby. Because of the expedition? Because, uh, yeah. Should we find, let's, let's, let's talk to Peter Smith. We might just get, we may not even, uh, having heard Mr. Smith's name from Henry Ellis, Holmes travels to the men's residence, hoping the long trip will be worth the effort. I bet you it won't be. He won't Sorry, be. I oh. can't help you, Ducky. But Mr. Smith has been out of the country since the middle of March. He's a good-looking bloke. Except for the dirt under his fingernails. Hmm. Dirt under his fingernails. Peter Smith, he's got big hands and dirt under his fingernails, and he killed them. But how do we prove it? Yeah, he's out of the country because he's guilty and he doesn't want to be found. I thought Travis killed Turnbull. Yeah, but someone killed Weatherby and and Windebank. I bet you Peter Smith killed killed. You don't think Travis killed the others too? I don't think or Travis had the big him? hands to kill to kill. Uh, well, he guess he did kill one of them. All right. Well, I don't know. Peter Smith killed somebody. You think so? I I don't. I'm beginning to yeah, think less because Daniel's not. <laughs> but he's been out of the country. All right. So he didn't kill somebody. He's on a different expedition. Okay, let's, let's get a hint. We're getting near the end of our stream here. Okay. Let's get well, another hint. Go, go get a hint. But we could also suggest go back no, to the judge. Blue hints. Watson's hint. An article in the newspaper from March 5th mentions the strangulation of Ebenezer Turnbull. We did that already. There were ancient linens about his neck. Are those strong enough to do the deed? Note, there is no author for this article. It's, it's, well, we already know that Turnbull, I mean, that Travis killed Turnbull. This, this hint is behind us. It's not a, it's not. Okay. So, so, um, Note there was no author for this article. It's it's Travis uh, under the okay. So do you think so, Tori? Are you thinking we just stay everybody that Travis killed everybody? I mean, I guess I'm I'm a little confused. Wait, which? Let's look at the article again. But none of them have an uh, none of them have a. No, I don't no, see no. an author for any of them. Shipping departures. Public Chiron causing a crowd to assemble. Og Asag Pierre was charged with performing a, with a bear in the public highway and causing a crowd to a bear. Is that does he would he know where the monkey is? Who had the monkey? Who had the monkey? Who indeed? Travis Who had the had monkey? The mon it was Travis. only one. Exactly. Travis had the monkey. So Travis killed everybody. Let's, Let's just keep... go to the Let's... judge. 
<laughs> Let's go to the judge. Okay. Let's do it. Hear ye, hear ye. Just need the right reason. The Queen's right? Court now stands in order. Hear ye. Hear no, exit. Okay. Mr. Holmes, so, Travis. You've been looking into the mummy Come now. on, sir. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm going. Tell me then. Try him. Who was Evan? And it was number three. You, so we got that one. I don't know why that no. one, but that's why that one is. And we're going to say it's Travis again. Mm -hmm. And he did it because he so was, when they, when they were soon as Weatherby's Egyptian dissertation was published Weatherby? for Travis. The Times is planning to replace Travis with Weatherby. Weatherby what, scoffed at Travis's. Was Travis was angry that Weatherby was chosen. Though. That one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're on. Revenge. And James Windebank probably in the book. was Philip Travis. Now, Mr. Holmes, who killed James Windebank? Why did he kill James Windebank? This he Travis failed Travis in one of his classes, did not choose him for the expedition. Him kill James Windebank? Well, it's Charm the second one. Chose him, so we know it's not this. It wasn't it. Wasn't wait. Which is the one? Maybe it was. Wait, who chose him? Windebank ridiculed Travis's pursuit of ancient mysticism. His names are too similar. I know. As an experiment in the resurrection of the dead. Okay, so Turnbull didn't choose him, right? So I thought it would be this one. I think it is this one. Was or, was Windebank did not choose him for the expedition. I think, I think so. Let's try that. Yeah. I'm getting Weatherby and Windbl well, Wind You've done an admirable job in resolving this mystery. Well I'd done, Sherlock. Just about any Tory. other armchair detective out there. I, I feel that, like however, that you really could have gotten this a long time. Ago. <laughs> that, your I thought it was too obvious. All right, so Tori, you are you you. We have to trust your instincts. Yeah. That's that's the the next time we play this game, where as soon as you have a hunch, we got to go with your hunch. Let's okay. not. I think we're smarter than. I think. We are smarter than the average sleuth, and or when I say we, I mean you, and uh, yeah, not me. No. <laughs> um, All right, we did it, and we did it in 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 record time. Wonderful, and it's, uh, it's fun. This is fun. This is really yeah. fun. It's a lot. Nice job, Daniel. Thanks. Good. Good call. So we um, have two more cases at our disposal. Mm -hmm. Do we want to just hear what the first case is and then we'll come back to it later and just kind of get a little taste of it? And we have 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. sure. Let's okay. do it. Okay. Right, so I'm going to take my headphones off because my ears are killing me. I'm going to share my desktop with you guys again. Let's see. I bet you the next one's going to be a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, they probably start us off with a simpler one. Exit. Okay, so the other two options we have are. Hold on, hold on. We got a nice soul. Ozzy Astaroth tipped five dollars. Good job, everyone. By the way, that was the talented Bill Corbett from MST3K and Riff Tracks playing Philip Travis. I wonder if they what? would consider riffing this game. Maybe he could be a guest someday. Smiley yeah. face. Oh, that would be Maybe. fun. That would be really fun. Thank you, okay. Ozzy. Appreciate it. So, so we Thanks have everyone. the Thanks, case of the thin soldier and the case of the mystified murderess. Murderess? Yeah. Murderess. Uh, mystified murderess or chin soldier? Yeah. Hmm. Um... Let's do the mystified murderess. What do you yeah, think, Paul? Great choice. I was thinking murderess too. That's what I was thinking. I was going to say that if we had, if I, if you wanted the other one and I wanted the murderess, that we should have done a Rochambeau. But we're on the same team, so let's uh, let's go with murderess. Okay. <laughs> Peter Farley. Wow, the volume on this thing. Are these guys still <laughs> around? I wonder. It'd be fun to talk to talk to our Sherlock guy. 
Yeah. Okay, so let me give you guys. Do you want? Do you want the controls, Tori? You want to give it a go? No, okay. you do. You do. Well, okay. I'll do it next time. But you. Okay. Sounds okay. good. So try to start that now. Might be a little. I'm not sure. I think Holmes' introduction may be the same. Oh, okay. But I let's can't. Click uh, it. I don't have. I don't have the oh. controls. Yes, you do. I don't. I'm clicking around here. It's not doing anything. Never mind. I'll... Okay, it's the same one. Okay, play the game. Within the sitting room at 2.20... Already, we've already got a un, un, un thing. Yeah, the <clears> intro. <throat> recounts the Dr. Daily John news Watson for... recounts the daily news for Holmes as the great detective listens, hoping the Times contains a case worthy of his sleuthing skills. Society burglar strikes again. Mm, series of burglaries. Six over the period from June 2nd to June 17th. On July 2nd, the 7th occurred at the home of Sir Sanford Leeds. Cleopatra Tiara stolen, it says. As in the other cases, uh, no sign of extensive search by the thief and only one piece of jewelry involved. Victims elsewhere at the time. Here's a complete list of the particulars, Holmes, if you'd care to read it. I believe you'll find them in the study. How do you do, gentlemen? I am Gerald Locke. I am the Please burglar. Seated, Mr. Locke. <laughs> How can we be of service? Three days ago, Guy Clarendon was found murdered at Halliday's. It's preposterous. One of them has... But Miss Frances Nolan has been charged and is being detained <laughs> at the criminal court, Old Bailey. We have Holmes sideburns versus no sideburns. Ah, yes. <laughs> Sister no of sideburns? Paul Nolan. Only surviving heirs of Sir Malcolm Nolan, founder of the Aberdeen Navigation Company. I seem to recall that Sir Malcolm yeah. and Lady Nolan were killed when some lunatic threw a bomb into their carriage. It seems to me that later I heard something about it being a case of mistaken identity. Wasn't one of their little offspring in the carriage with them at the time? Yes, it was Loretta. Mm. Lots Francis of cyber. sister. She was only four. They but look I like they're about to fall off. Injured. Mr. Locke. <laughs> There's not enough. I've heard that you are a suitor for not Miss enough glue Nolan's to keep hand, those are you not? on. Yes. And was it not also true that she was being courted by Guy Clarendon? Unfortunately, yes. Have you any idea why Frances Nolan was charged with the crime? Ah, well, she was discovered over the body with a pistol in her hand. That would do it. But you don't understand. Frances is totally incapable of murder, not even of a scoundrel such as Guy Clarendon. Scoundrel? But he's from such blue blood. Also, if I'm not mistaken, he's an accomplished batsman for the West London Cricketeers, a Ooh, ranked yeah. fencer in international competition. He was also Dang, a bit of a bounder, exactly. Watson. What an understatement. Guy Clarendon was excessively fond of cards and strong drink. His father had all but disinherited him. I tried to tell Francis that Clarendon was no good, but to no avail. And now look at the mess she's in. Will you help? Most certainly. He killed him. <laughs> he did it. It was him. It's okay, I missed dude. a bunch of that stuff because Paul kept making comments. <laughs> yeah, about the sideburns. <laughs> cha, 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 cha. I'm terrible. No wonder I we can... couldn't solve the last case. I know. I know. Trying so hard to focus. Um, um, but those sideburns were very distracting. I do understand, Paul. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, it's okay. And I don't want to listen to the whole thing again. What do, what do we know, Daniel? Do you want to tell us what you what, what we weren't listening to? No, we're going to listen to it <laughs> once again at the beginning of the oh, next stream. Boy. Okay. This time, good. no talking. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, everyone. We'll, we'll cut this a couple minutes short today. We appreciate your joining us. This was really fun. That's a good call, Daniel. Thanks. Yeah, that was fun. Um, and Tori, it's great having you. And I don't know if we mentioned this on the air. We talked about this before we went on, but for the time being and until things change, because I've got a couple of things coming up, but as long as we're both available, Tori will be joining us every other Friday. That'll be our, our, that'll be our sort of Schwex schedule with Tori. So she'll be with us. Oh, thank yeah. you, Jwex. Thank you, Jwex, as always. So generous. Appreciate that. Um, didn't quite get to our goal today, but that's okay. Next time we do, we'll do a wheel of Curtis. But, uh, so Tori, um, with this new 
schedule. We'll see you a week from next Friday and we'll come back to this game and uh, maybe play a little bit of this game. And then uh, uh, maybe we'll play an hour of this game and then do a little Jackbox with it, with the, with the the gang or something like that. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So sounds great. All right. Well, till then, good luck with uh, your writing and everything else. And we'll see all you guys. uh, See you guys soon next week. See you soon. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye, Bye. everybody. Take care, guys. See you later. Elementary.